Oh my gosh, isn't that beautiful? That was Langebahn in December last year. Trevor Pistorius, thank you so much, our cameraman. And uh, also, he compiled that particular report, put it together for us. So that was then, but this is now. And I've got the Minister of Tourism for South Africa with me, Martina Swanskalkweg. Look at that, wasn't that amazing? Do you, when you look back at that, that was a year ago. Can you believe it? Yes, that was a year ago, and we're making good progress. So, Leanne, behind all this government speak, you know, it's actually quite simple. We want to grow tourism in this country. It's going so well with us from an international perspective. We want to be one of the top 20 destinations. By 2020, we're well on course. We want to develop the, develop, uh, the uh, domestic market. But there's a third very important piece of the puzzle, and that's uh, what do we do regionally? And that is what this is all about, because we understand that if the industry grows in South Africa, it will be good for the region. If Mozambique does well, it will be good for all of us. The relationship as it stands right now, how much have we benefited from something like this Transfrontier Park? This is always mutually beneficial. And obviously many South Africans go to Mozambique and we would like to encourage them to go to Mozambique, to explore Mozambique. There are wonderful new products on the market literally every month. But obviously South Africa also benefit. And uh, just as one example, you know, people think that uh, people on the African continent don't travel by air. I looked at the figures, 51,000 Mozambicans traveled to South Africa last week, not by road, but by air. That's excluding the more than a million people who travel by road to South Africa. So yes, it is mutually beneficial. Yeah. Now, I mean, that's incredible when you think about it. And I mean, from here, as I was speaking to David, I mean, it's, it's, it's 30 kilometers to Mozambique from this particular camp that we are at. So I mean, you go, you spend the night in one of the rest camps in Mozambique, and then you're able to access the country if that's what you want to do. So I mean, it's, it's a relationship where, you really are. You're making people enjoy the country, but you're also creating spending, which is important. Yes, we should never forget that uh, the borders that we have are basically lines on paper. And once one is down here, you realize that there are ecosystems. Nature doesn't respect what we've drawn on pieces of paper. And as Africans, we have a long way to go. Less than 5% of all international tourists come to the African continent. And it is because we do not market ourselves well enough. And if we can work together, market ourselves as a region, all of us will benefit. And if you think about the future, we really have the new gold on the African continent. These protected areas, these wonderful national parks, we will not get new ones. They will not be more in future. Uh, and that's what we have, uniquely African. Yeah. Let's talk about sand parks now for, for a minute, because there's always a big raging debate. And, and unfortunately, I didn't address it with David. We didn't have enough time. But, um, you know, there's always the new generation and the old generation people want the kruger park to remain the rustic kruger park that it is no technology no tvs in fact he was telling me that it was a fight to get air conditioning into some of the rest camps because some people just wanted it to be you know this is as close to nature as you can get how do you draw that balance 
It is a very delicate balance, and uh, yes, this is a, a raging debate uh, yeah. out there between the purists and those who believe that we should adapt. I'm one of those who believe that we should adapt. I'm working very well with my colleague, Minister Mulewa, the Minister for Environmental Affairs, and her responsibility is obviously to protect, to ensure that for generations to come, we put them in a position to also enjoy what we have today. But these parks must be able to, to put it bluntly, pay for themselves. And that's why we need tourism. It creates jobs thousands, tens of, of thousands of jobs for people in these local areas. These national parks are really the engine rooms of local economies. And uh, I believe we are not nearly, we have not nearly reached the potential. So I'm one of those who believe that we should adapt, that there should be more modern facilities in the parks, and I fully support our approach in that regard. Okay, so, I mean, that's something, if you would like to write to us, please do. I'd love to hear from you. Which are you? Are the, you you're the purist or are you the other side? We'd love to hear. What would you like to see the face of our, our parks looking like? Um, Melissa, let's talk about static travel, because last night there was a dinner that, was, uh, that, uh, that South African Tourism hosted for the uh, Mozambican uh, counterparts that came through and we will be chatting to him a bit later on the program and something so interesting was a visa spoken about uh, one visa to get into all of the SADC countries is that a process that is underway yes um, we are talking about that and I hope that uh, we will be able to make progress what we want to do is to agree on a uni visa so that when people all over the world apply for a visa to one of our countries in the SADC region that visa will apply to all SADC countries. And uh, we believe it will be hugely beneficial because once people get here, they suddenly realize, well, I would like to go to Mozambique or to Zimbabwe or to South Africa. And suddenly they have to apply for a visa locally. That doesn't work. So that will enable, I believe, a much better interregional travel. But it's kind of like your Schengen visa when you go overseas. Yes, exactly. But obviously there's a different political dispensation here, there. And so that's what we need to do. But I just want to come back to, you, you know, your previous question. There's something that I think needs some attention when we spoke about national parks. Five million people visit our national parks every year. 75% of them are South Africans. But when one analyzes that, those South Africans, it's quite an interesting picture. Because of our history, many people were excluded from the national parks, of being tourists here and visitors. And there is special attention to convince people from historically disadvantaged communities that these parks are absolutely wonderful. And in terms of day visitors, 32% of day visitors are now from previously disadvantaged communities, but still only 10% of people who stay overnight. So that is a huge challenge for all of us and uh, a huge market because there are millions of people who can actually afford to come here, enjoy what we have, but still just can't get themselves to do it. So that is a good challenge for us. And, and I have to add to that because, you know, when we, when we arrived here at the Mapani camp, we, you know, I was having a look at the tariff list um, of how much it costs to stay a night here. And the variety of prices is, it's massive. You can get it from a few hundred rands a night uh, up to a couple of thousand rands a night. So, I mean, it, it, it really is catered for for a wide range. Because I know that there are a lot of people that say they wish they could go to the private game parks and go and do that. But there is this, and this is, I mean, this is what it's all about, you know. So there is, it, it, it isn't a pricing issue. That's something that I can, that I can say. I looked at it myself. Yes, sometimes one encounters the perception yeah. that it is expensive. And some people, there's this urban legend. But the fact is that from camping sites, people can stay overnight here in Kruger National Park and our parks for 40 rand a night. Other accommodation rooms, 90 rand per person. But then obviously it goes up to the high end of the market, 13,000 rand per person. That's mostly for international visitors, but uh, it covers the whole range. And I think that's something that government has decided to do, and it's it's... I think it's delivering that uh, these parks must be accessible and affordable to our people. Fantastic. Minister, thank you for thanks for being with us um, and uh, enjoy it. This is this is fantastic. It's absolutely amazing to be here and uh, to enjoy the Kruger National Park. Good to have you, uh, the Minister of Tourism, Martinez Swanskogweg, on morning.